thank you so much for the invitation to be here today. Um, I'm going to try to save plenty of time for comments and questions. This is a topic that inevitably touches people one way or another, so I'm going to make sure there's time to, uh, to hear your views. The idea that marijuana ought to be legalized has been gaining traction. On February 20th of this year, the Seattle Times published an editorial calling for marijuana to be legalized. Seattle's mayor, Mike McGinn, supports it, as does the former chief of police, Norm Stamper, former U.S. attorney, John McKay, and Seattle City Councilman, Tim Burgess. Pete Holmes, the city attorney of Seattle, does not prosecute people charged with uh, marijuana possession offenses and has publicly spoken in support of marijuana legalization. In the last two sessions of the legislature, Representative Mary Lou Dickerson has introduced a bill, along with some of her colleagues, that would make it legal to grow and sell marijuana under state regulation. Last year in California, a proposition was on the ballot. It didn't pass, but 46% of voters favored legalizing the sale of uh, marijuana in that state. They'll try again in 2012, and we're likely to see uh, an effort similar to that in Colorado and uh, here in this state. Uh, as John said, public opinion polls are indicating that the tides are shifting. A Pew Research Center poll released last March indicated that 45% of Americans favor legalization, with uh, support growing by about 1.5% per year since 1995. Now, 50% of Americans are opposed, but that's down from 81% two decades uh, earlier. A poll of Washingtonians last year showed 56% in favor of legalization. And for those of us who are fans of his program, we know that the uh, travel expert Rick Steves <laughs> legalization. Just this morning, happened to check it on, uh, on the internet, uh, the following story uh, appeared. Uh, the headline is, Global War on Drugs Has Failed, Key Panel Says. And I'll read the first couple of paragraphs of this news release. The global war on drugs has failed, and governments should explore legalizing marijuana and other controlled substances, according to a commission that includes former heads of state, a former UN Secretary General and a business uh, mogul. The new report by the Global Commission on Drug Policy argues that the decades-old worldwide war on drugs has failed with devastating consequences for individuals and societies around the world. Uh, former Secretary General of the United Nations, Kofi Annan, chaired the uh, panel. Uh, my goal today is to give an overview of the issue. I'll talk about the reasons why support for legalization seems to be growing. I'll also list some of the reasons that opponents have voiced. And finally, I'll talk about, uh, for a few minutes, about how this all adds up for me. Just a word about my background. I have been studying marijuana dependence since the mid-1980s with support from various federal agencies. And uh, the research that I focus on is how to help adults and adolescents who are over their heads with marijuana smoke uh, to make changes, to quit, uh, to cut back, or to sort out what answer is going to be the best one for them. So I want to begin with a bit of history. Uh, it won't be news to anybody in this room that the 1960s was a period in which marijuana use blossomed. It was an era in which the civil rights movement and women's rights and challenges of so many societal conventions gained strength. And it was also a time when opposition to the war in Vietnam drew hundreds of thousands to become activists. And smoking pot kind of became a view of that movement, a, sim a symbol of belonging uh, to that movement. However, severe penalties were on the books for marijuana possession that had been enacted uh, decades earlier. And so in the 60s and uh, 70s, as marijuana use became very popular, a lot of people went to jail, went to prison uh, for, various, uh, for, for fairly long periods of time for possessing uh, marijuana. In 
the early 1970s, a presidential commission, it was chaired by Governor Schaefer of Pennsylvania, a presidential commission recommended that marijuana possession by adults be decriminalized. The commission members believed that the harms caused by putting marijuana users in jail outweighed the harms caused by use of the drug. They did not call for the outright legalization of marijuana. They did not want to see growers and sellers and, and, and stores where people could buy marijuana because they didn't believe that marijuana was going to, uh, its, its popularity was going to endure. They did recommend, however, that possession of marijuana by adults have no penalties whatsoever. Now in the 1970s, a number of states passed laws that followed this National Commission's recommendations. The city of Seattle enacted such an ordinance in the 1970s, but the Washington State Legislature did not. So today, if somebody is arrested and charged with uh, possessing a small amount of marijuana, uh, and if they're convicted, they'll have a criminal record that will stay with them for the rest of their lives. They'll serve up to 90 days in jail with a mandatory minimum of one day. They'll pay a fine of up to $1,000 with a mandatory minimum of $250. So in the 1970s, the idea that marijuana ought to be decriminalized really gained a lot of steam, and then the steam all uh, came out of the balloon. <laughs> the steam kind of dissipated when we moved far more towards a conservative direction, elected Ronald Reagan. The country was really ready to back away from this kind of a change in social policy. And I think part of the reason was that in the 1960s and, and 70s, we saw a proliferation of pro-drug magazines like High Times and head shops selling all kinds of paraphernalia, and rightly so, parents became terrified because a lot of what was happening in these head shops and these magazines was aimed right at teenagers. So the movement really uh, uh, came to a dead halt uh, during the uh, uh, late uh, uh, 1970s. And then new life was breathed into the idea that marijuana policy maybe ought to be reformed. And it was when the topic of medical uses of marijuana came up. The journal article in the journal of uh, the New England Journal of Medicine in the 1970s, where an oncologist wrote that he found some of his cancer patients reporting that when they smoked pot before having a chemotherapy treatment, the experience of chemotherapy was far less painful than otherwise. Less vomiting, less nausea, less of the extreme gastrointestinal distress. And word got around, and here in our state, a woman by the name of Coralie Paperman, a grandmother, just about the straightest grandmother you would expect, became a champion for medical marijuana being available to patients and their physicians. Her friends called her Corky, and Corky had cancer. And like many others, found that smoking marijuana benefited her when she did it before having a chemotherapy treatment. She told the story that one day she discovered a corn cob pipe and a baggie with something that looked like oregano on her front doorstep. And a note instructed her about what this was for and how and when to use it. And after she became experienced in, in, in having that benefit, uh, Corky became a tireless advocate for making marijuana available to patients despite its uh, use as a medicine being prohibited under federal law. Largely because of her, the legislature uh, in the late 1970s passed a medical marijuana research bill and Governor Dixie Lee Ray signed it. A number of other states passed laws similar to that, essentially setting up statewide research programs on medical marijuana use. And that got around the federal prohibition of marijuana being prescribed because the federal government would permit 
research on medical marijuana. So here in the state of Washington and in I think 10 other states, medical marijuana research programs got going. Those uh, programs were difficult to uh, maintain, in part because the focus largely was on conducting controlled studies and then publishing the results, not on making it easy for cancer patients to get uh, access to marijuana. So a new kind of law began to be passed, not a research law. And in the uh, late 1990s, California, Washington, and a number of other states passed laws that said, if you had a written authorization from a physician that said you were authorized to use marijuana for medical purposes, that would protect you from being arrested or convicted for a violation of the marijuana possession laws. And in several states, those laws said, if you don't have access to marijuana on your own, and you're a patient, you can have somebody else serve as a caregiver for you, and that caregiver can provide marijuana. What the, what the law inferred was the caregiver would have a garden and would, would make marijuana available to you as a, uh, as a medical marijuana patient. Now these laws had a lot of ambiguities because they didn't say how many patients this caregiver could be caring for. <laughs> and so what's happened now in a number of states around the country that had law that passed laws to allow a patient to be protected from arrest with a doctor's authorization and to have a caregiver provide marijuana to them, the ambiguities led to caregivers saying, as they opened up dispensaries, well, I'm a caregiver to one person at a time. <laughs> and that one person at a time ended up with six, eight hundred people <laughs> getting marijuana from that caregiver. It was a real uh, exploitation of a law that was intended to provide compassionate relief uh, when, when marijuana was not possible to provide through a pharmacy for the doctor's uh, prescription. As might also not surprise you, a number of physicians became specialists in writing authorizations. <laughs> and uh, I suspect they became quite wealthy. So we're living at a very interesting time. Medical marijuana laws have now been passed in 16 states in the District of Columbia. Now when you think of it, what a strange way to <clears throat> do medicine, to avoid the FDA process of a pharmaceutical company doing research, spending millions of dollars to test the efficacy and safety of a medicine, and then the FDA approving it. Now we have state legislatures saying that marijuana is to be permitted for medical use. I have to uh, uh, tell you, I believe that we have two realities occurring with medical marijuana today. We have a lot